Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Haunt Acting. Um, joining me today is my son, Griffin Powell. Hey. he's uh, He's been on again, off again, Haunt Actor since he was about seven years old. He hasn't always loved the industry. Um, sometimes he's been pushed along the force to do some stuff to help me out. Uh, but I wanted to ask him, um, for everybody here, about some of his personal experiences and what um, he's learned by going to haunts and we'll just kind of have a little discussion about his time and uh, what he's learned to enjoy and maybe what he disliked about some of this. Let's start off with um, your first haunt with me. Uh, it was our first haunt together because we went to uh, Temple's Police Department um, and we did the little uh, Playground scene. Yeah, and I had the little zombie baby gloves. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, being seven, um, even walking through with none of the music, like all the lights on, I was still like, oh, yeah. They did a good job about building a creepy environment. Um, What's your favorite haunt? Yeah, Freak Sphere. Thought for some reason it was Hunter Hill at some point. Oh, uh, I yeah, I get it. You were hanging out with uh, slightly older guys at uh, Freaks of Fear. But you get to feel like one of the big kids. Yeah, and from that, having Stephen say stay in this one spot kind of made me realize that I do like being a, a haunter. Haunter, haunt actor. I bet it's a haunt performer. Just haunted. It was just shorter. Easy for you. Yeah. Um, it it almost made me realize that I have some, for some reason, I've gotten some kind of sense of pride out of doing that. Doing a good job. Mm -hmm. okay. And then him saying that I can't move, because there were so many spots that I could, like, be. Because me and the two other guys just constantly switched up where we were standing. Until so you're saying you felt like you had developed a, an instinct for yeah. giving off good skin. And work, you were working in, in tandem with a group and doing a good job. Um, so we can gleam that um, one problem you might face is that uh, like with any job in the real world, you can have some supervisors who uh, aren't really cued into what you're doing or understand how well it works for you. Um, a lot of times you're going to be dealing with somebody who uh, who's getting orders from somebody else and just relaying that and telling you where you need to be. Uh, a lot of times we gotta we gotta uh, you know still uh, obey what we're being told by older people because. It can be a sense of uh, safety. Um, in other in other cases, you may need to just kind of uh, take time to communicate with that person. Hey, listen, here's why this works. Um, is there any way we can do it this way? One of the issues with um, freaks of fear, and it will happen in many haunts that you might come across, is that you are under man. And so, with just a few people in a large trail to, to fill out, um, everybody has to be very separated. You'll find yourself uh, at times being very lonely and bored because you have to be separated from everybody by a certain amount of, of room so they don't end up walking through you know, yards and yards of empty space with no, no scare. But here's my thing. Yes, it was a long trail, but you, it wasn't that we were unmanned, like we, we had a lot of space to fill. That, I don't think that's the problem. You could be undermanned in a lot of things, but in this one specific thing, if everybody were more skilled, it wouldn't have been a good problem. 
So dealing with a lot of the first timers, did you help anybody um, teach any techniques or anything? What what did you find as far as working with other people who are underskilled? I wasn't really the one working with people that were underskilled. Uh, the, the the two other guys that I was with, I was like, with what they're doing, it's a okay. I mean. Did you learn anything from the older guys that you were working with at the front? Because I was at the front. Well, whatever the new and the two other guys uh, got together, um, I forget which one of us threw out the idea of like, hey, what if we change our positions of where we're standing? Um, and <clears throat> that really... I've lost my kind of Well, I know that switching a scene up can, uh, can keep you from getting bored as a con actor, but also when you have repeat customers. We had that two keep, or three times. Who keep coming why. through over and over. Um, they're going to want to try and go to that same spot and do a jump on you before you can come out with them. Um, it's a very irritating um, thing for a guest to do, but if they're paying money to keep going back through over and over, and it does help if you switch out your actors. If you know somebody's going to go back through and switch place with somebody, so they might know where something's supposed to happen, but they're not expecting the person who jumps out. It it helps out a little bit because you can refresh. I, that, well, I looked at you like I've okay. got that. Is, Is that got another point? To no, that's it. Um, so. Moving away from uh, Briggs and Field. Let's talk about I'm Not Golden. Because you had a great uh, little skip that you did. You're still a little bit younger than God, That's when I first had to try and learn a straight face. That was when you first started doing lines. Oh, yeah. And uh, so you got to uh, stand on the bridge with the fog machine going over here. When people came through, you were going. <laughs> Mommy, little little kid in the distance, or on the bridge, you know, in the fog, going, "Mommy, mommy." The hardest part was looking people in the eyes and saying that. <sighs> I guess that's why they had to put the mask on that one kid, uh, Doctor Who. <laughs> so, how? Tell, walk me through your anxiety as you were doing your lines for the first time. Not doing them right. That's really all it was. Because when you did get it right, what were some of the reactions? I mean, there were sometimes you were really. I ain't your mom. <laughs> That's not good. Good use of tracking. Talk about your experiences actually haunting. It was fun. Um, I d couldn't really see anybody because I was falling backwards with a crappy ball. Um, but you could hear. I couldn't ever really tell. I even sometimes messed up and walked out too early because I. I know what I'm trying to say. My tongue just does not want to work. Um. So let's let's clear this up for everybody. You were um, blind to the because of the costume. Yes. You were doing the backwards crab walk, and um, you had a handler. I guess it was Hannah Homie there with you. I think. Uh, 
But you got you had to do something very difficult, and so the payoff if you if you came out the right time and it was difficult to do because you were falling backwards. Um, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get to hear that at least something you can hear people being uncomfortable. So there, there's a little bit of payoff. You know you've done a good job. What has been your favorite performance when you got? Oh, oh. I don't know if you were with me, but do you remember when I went down to the graveyard and we spent yeah. a little bit of time there? Um, that one was pretty interesting. Although I think we didn't spend too much time there. No, we were crawling around the dark for no reason at all. The generator that kept our lights on went out, so it was just ridiculous. Um, and that was a, it's one of those things where your, your haunt owner or operator has a lot of responsibility, uh, such as keeping correct power or, in this case, a generator. Um, and if you are working for somebody who's on their game, very responsible, they're going to make it a great experience for you. A lot of times you might run into somebody who uh, who isn't, you know, for whatever reason, they're not at the top of their game, and they they let everybody else down because they don't prepare. Um, you can you you'll eventually begin to understand that they have a lot on their plate, and so you'll probably want to go to your space early, kind of claim it, take a little ownership, so to speak. Make sure that you have all the supplies that you need. Make sure, <coughs> sorry, especially in our case where you're out in the woods, you get a generator running the lights out that far back. You're gonna wanna make sure you know that somebody has checked the gasoline. Eventually you'll get older, you can check the gasoline yourself, but you wanna make sure that uh, you have gasoline in the generator or, or your, that your lights are all uh, working. You're gonna get there before dark. You want to make sure you have a flashlight somewhere available because eventually working in haunted industry you're going to be walking around in the dark. Most people have lights on their phones now. It's not a big deal. Um, but make sure that you have something like that uh, readily available. I also remember when we were going on the ride and there was this one, there was these two uh, people that were walking through and they were so scared, and at the end, whenever they were leaving, everybody would just come crowding around them mm. at those times. So you've been really busy um, with ROTC stuff in fall, um, but when that's over, you think by the time you're 18 or whatever, you're done with the service. Oh, got it to work, okay. <laughs> Do you think that you'll go back to haunting? Someday. Not probably. No. What do you like about it the best? The connections you can get, like the the friends you can make. Friendships. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, if you get the right people coming in, you can really get them to get really scared. There is um one or two times some um, pretty sure there were drunk people walking through uh, Freak's Fear. I walked right behind them until they got into the next part. And it was. It was what kind of uh, characters or uh, monsters or whatever would you like to do someday? I'm gonna stick with the plan. But if, if I were um, having to change it up, I would go back to the walking or. Maybe some kind of crazed lunatic. Because, you know, you don't really mess with somebody that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I've had enough of those. <laughs> Somebody told me recently that uh, pirates are kind of a big thing now. So, it's really pushing your boundaries. But, you know. I mean, I guess I could give myself a look like a pirate. <laughs> some blackout in my teeth. 
All right, well, thanks. Uh, and is there any advice you'd give to a young kid who was doing the first talk? What, what would you tell them to do? To? Learn some patience. Because there, there are going to be some times that you're going to sit there and you'll feel like you're going to sit there for two or three hours. But yeah, early in the haunt season, not everybody's going to a haunted house. Um, when you get full up and you get really busy toward the end, toward Halloween, uh, but there are some dead nights in the uh, <laughs> dead nights in the haunted house. Wah wah. That's solid. Um, What about but you have to make sure that unless you're a zombie, you have a lot of energy for that night because it will get very TV over sitting there and just sitting there because you just want to go to sleep. That and it, if you're in some kind of costume that's not insulating, like a jumpsuit, um, it get something under there because it will get cold. Um, yeah, if you're if you're in the south like us, you would have the benefit of having uh, the first two weeks of the fall are usually still kind of warm, it's still very similar. And uh, but if you've got that uh, thick outfit. Um, for a costume, it, it's really going to help you out later on toward the end, mid mid to late um, fall, jumps to winter. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you are you've eaten something before you go. Um, you've done all that. Use the restroom, food, water, flashlight. Make sure you bring that. Um, maybe some kind of entertainment. I Would you tell them to uh, practice their lines? Because we had such problems uh, when you started out with just uh, mommy, mommy, or you, my mommy. Yeah, you, you do want to do that. If you have to keep a straight face, find something that looks entirely stupid and look at it and keep a straight face. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, um, that'll be it for now. And uh, maybe we'll come back later and talk about some more specific stuff. Uh, so, we'll see you guys next time. Um, bye. like we had just begun Science ruled the land We 
purchase science off the shelf. We must devise a plan to save ourselves from ourselves. This is my prayer for you. I don't know where you're going to. I'll place this vision in your was like an angel I knew that Watching over.